you join us on month six, day nine. Panic has broken out all over Europe this evening as leading men in Brussels have failed to come up with a contingency plan. With the American government hanging on by a thread, EU officials have been pressured to act quickly. They doubted our political system's ability to act. It may sound a bit too simplistic, but uh, those folks in Washington really uh, have heard a resounding, you know, get your house in order, so to speak. Britain has been the standalone state in Europe regarding taking action on the outbreak, with Britons continually encouraged to capture rather than kill. In return, Whitehall has promised extra rations and supplies to all of those that provide viable specimens for study. Europe's stance on Operation Limbo has come under fire due to the overwhelming public demand for the rest of the states to follow suit. Europe's leaders have so far refused to implement the UK's policy. And I call on all members of local communities to work with the police constructively. There has been further domestic scrutiny as a result of the government's decision to beef up security in the City of London. With trouble brewing on the continent and at home, that acting PM refused to comment on the situation, warning not to expect a quick resolution. And now over to John for our survival forecast. And thank you very much, Janine. I'm now here with Mr. Matthew Wolverson, who's an expert in zombieology and also a freelance hunter. Mr. Wolverson, can you give our viewers at home any advice what to do when the undead attack? You need to be aware of your surroundings, son. You need to know where they're going to be coming from, how many there might be. And you need to have a good escape route ready, just in case. And do you have a particular way to lure them in? Do you use any bait at all? Shit. Piss. Blood. Vomit. Anything like that will do. But there's no substitute for the real thing. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, our viewers at home can't necessarily get their hands on that, but okay. Hey, hang on. Uh, what's all this then? And it looks like we may have a live demonstration now, even. <laughs> So, thank you very much there, Mr. Wolf. What you need to be aware of, yeah, levels of decomposition, they differ, you know. You can have a fresh kill, or you can have a body that's been dead for weeks. You don't end up killing somebody's nan by accident. Again, thank you very much. Help! Please! Please, let me have to do that, please! Please, I can pay you, please! What the hell do you think you're playing at? Screaming and shouting like it's New Year's Eve. Do you want to bring every walking cadaver down on us? Wait, I apologise. I was running until I got some distance on them. Just, they just come out of nowhere and they can engulf you. Yeah, I, I saw the sign on, on your door. I just assumed. Well, that's uh, enough assuming for one day. I haven't had anyone stop for months. Sit down, I'll pour you a drink. Thank you. Well, it's just, uh, certainly quite cosy in here. I manage. It's not like we have much choice these days. Well, I see you have electricity. I have a generator. It's crude, but it works. I scrounged it from a warehouse where I used to work. Thank you. It might come in handy someday. Okay, and uh, where was that? Derby. Used to work in a train manufacturing business until they went abroad. Right, so uh, borrowed without asking. You can turn your nose up if you like, but I prefer to cook and light my own house. If you can call it that. What gives you moral high ground anyway? No, no nothing at all. I, I, I was just merely inquiring. I wasn't having a go. It's just... I was just surprised to receive such generosity. It's not something I've really been accustomed to over the last couple of months. Well, someone's got to stay humane, haven't they? <laughs> well, well, yes, of course, yes. Well, I, um, well, I see that the television keeps you sane. It did, until it started showing the same damn report over and over again. Oh, you know, emergency broadcast system. I think every little bit of information is important. Quite like that hunter bloke, though. He seems to have his priorities straight. So what's your story? 
Uh, what do you mean? Well, you must have endured something. You wouldn't have survived until now without a story to tell. I remember it was a particularly hectic day. The phones didn't stop ringing. It reminded me of when Lehman's crashed. I was in the gentleman's hall for a little like this. The building's fire alarm sounded. of the left. Bodies were dropping everywhere. I looked through a crack in the door and saw the new intern carrying the corner. I managed to force the door open. battle my way through a couple to reach her. I propped her over my shoulder, made, to, made my way out of the building. I've never spilt, even seen so much blood in my life. What about you? Shh. Listen. Stumblers. What? A small group banded together. When they lose their trail, they go around looking for objects. Anything. Windows, doors, cracks, anything that may indicate some sign of life. They must have been the ones chasing you. It's over for now. I didn't know they were that smart. They're not. It's systematic. Like when the lights go off in a room and you lose your balance, stumble around trying to find yourself. When they lose their food, they become effectively blind. I think a sensory organs are shot too. Must be some kind of sixth sense. How far away are they? Next door. Almost as close to your shaken. <laughs> yeah, not easy without water. Not enough to spare for my hygiene. Yes, well, there wasn't even running water in the uh, compound in the city of London. No sharp implements either. For some reason they thought we might be a bit suicidal. <laughs> so, you're a banker? Uh, a financier, actually. What's the difference? Well, it's a little complicated. But, uh, basically, I'm a number cruncher. When did you first encounter them? Mostly civil unrest to begin with. Nothing had collapsed, just confusion, really. We were expected to be docile, obedient, Joe Public. The riot patrols made sure of that.
So here we are. You're about to achieve the peak of your existence. How do you mean? You saw my supplies. I won't last two months, especially with another mouth to feed. Why can't you just let me go? You didn't think it'd be that simple, did you? The truth is, I need you. Not that you're the first, but valuable commodities like yourself are hard to come by these days. All right, just get over with, okay? No, 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 no. You're mistaken. The pleasure is not in killing you, although a bit of suffering thrown in wouldn't go amiss. But you represent the security of my immediate future. Listen. They've locked on. It won't be long now. Look, what do I do to deserve this? That's a joke, right? Financier? <laughs> you almost had me fooled for a second there. Look, I, I, I can pay you whatever you like. Just please let me go. You people never learn. Your money means nothing here. You're going to learn the true meaning of sacrifice. If only your intelligence was as vast as your wealth. Oh well, I think it's time. No substitute for the real thing. <laughs> <laughs>